Napa, PNM family, friends, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the political leader of the People's National Movement, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley. Happy birthday, PNM! Party Chairman, Mr. Colin Imbert. Party Vice Chairman, Mr. Robert Lee Hunt. The Lady Vice Chairman, Mrs. Candil Robinson Regis. The Secretary of the PNM, Mr. Foster Cummins. Deputy Political Leader, Mrs. Joan Yule Williams. Mr. Rohan Sinanang. Mr. Fitzgerald Hines, and over in Tobago where the polls have just closed a little while ago, Mr. Kelvin Charles. <laughs> Other party officers, the mayor of Port of Spain, Alderman Joel Martinez, members of the diplomatic corps, our distinguished visitors all, Party members and supporters, members of the media, children. This is a historic day, not just for the PNM, but for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. It has been said that if this party had not been formed, to be put to the use of the people of Trinidad and Tobago by Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, it would have had to be invented. Because Trinidad and Tobago's history has been written in the stars. And it takes the coming of a great leader, Dr. Eric Eustace, Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, who would have seen us for what we could be and determined that we would be what we are meant to be. This party is usually the target of many. But let me give you my understanding of that. Tonight, one of our presenters used cricket as an indication of the number of years that we're celebrating, 64 not out. I remember a few years ago with Brian Lara at the peak of his political career, having been cheated out a few times, having been mishandled a few times, having been disrespected many times. But he was at the peak of his performance. And I was in the Car Caribbean island, which shall remain unnamed, with some people who shall remain nameless. And I was an invitee to lunch on that day. And one of the gentlemen on the table, in a conversation that was only cricket, because in those days, he only talked about cricket because Lara was on a rampage. And this gentleman persisted in carrying the conversation that Lara came about. <laughs> and he could only make runs on flat wicket. And another particular West Indian Basman was better, but he has get out early. But the day he didn't get out, he can break Lara record. <laughs> and I was supposed to have a meal in that environment. I did not want to respond in the way I could and should, so I left the table. But this PNM has no option to leave the table in Trinidad and Tobago. What we do know in cricket, as my friend Peter from Barbados, who is here with me, will tell you, when a batsman gets past 50 and you get to 64, your next target is 100. Yeah. 
And many of us in this room will not be here. When the, Norville. <laughs> Give us the secret, Norville. Give us the secret. But many of us in this room will not be here when the PNM celebrates its 100th birthday. But one thing that all of us know here today is that there will be a 100th birthday of the People's <laughs> National Union. And for that, all the people of Trinidad and Tobago will be better off for it. You see, there are those for whom the PNM is a political savior. Many are in this room tonight. There are many people in this room tonight and across our country who got their first opportunity to rise from the dust that they were in to where they are today. The PNM gave them that opportunity. And there are many families like mine where as I stand here tonight, I was the first member of my family to have gone to high school and that was as a result of PNM vision. And ladies and gentlemen, it would be useful just to take a little walk down memory lane with the PNM over that 65, 64 year journey we are on now. The PNM was here when the major assignment in the health system was the eradication of yours, YAWS. Some of you, are, many of you are too young to know that. There were public vehicles driving around this country and on the doors there were labels the yours eradication program you know what yours is when you go home look it up today if a citizen goes to mount hope and does not get leading edge technology available and available now whether it's mri or cat scan or what it is the sky is falling in but just remember where we came from and where the PNM has taken us to. There was a time in this country where the brightest students, students like Dr. Ken Julian and others, probably with a little bit of bad luck, may never have entered a university. Because university education and a university degree was reserved for the privileged few and the lucky fewer. Today, today, every child in this country as a result of that fundamental policy of the People's National Movement where every child should be allowed to develop to his or her potential. And whether it is Prime Minister Dr. Williams or Prime Minister Manning, that mission remains a mission which was started and maintained by the PLN. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we we're here as a little country acknowledging our leader on the throne of England but saying to ourselves that if we are able to make decisions for ourselves there are some decisions that we will make that will redound to our benefit and while we are still proud. I still remember standing outside the botanical gardens for three hours to see Princess Margaret pass and wave her. <laughs> we decided that there's something else that we can do when we respectfully break our bonds with London. But ladies and gentlemen, we had to be led in that direction because there were people in this country who believed that we were better off as a colony of the United Kingdom. But Dr. Williams talked out the majority to follow him and this party to independence. Today, I think there are few people in this country who will hand back our independence, but there are some. Ladies and gentlemen, we decided on many occasions to make decisions that were not popular with everybody, but we made those decisions on principle. This PNM met the oil industry in this country. We saw it enriching people, empowering people, 
contributing a little bit to our national development. We weren't even a nation yet. But when oil was selling at $2 a barrel, we used to get about 15 cents. So that's better than nothing. But then it came to the time when those oil companies decided that they've had enough for Trinidad and Tobago and there were better pickings to have elsewhere. So it was to close shop and leave. It fell to the PNM to make the fundamental decision to buy those industries. Bought out Shell, bought out Texaco, bought out BP. And there were those amongst us who said that that was a bad idea, wasting public money because the industry was dead. Fortunately, there was a PNM that believed that we should believe. And that is why when the oil prices flew up from where it was to what we now refer to as the oil boom, we were able to do things in and for this country that some only dreamt of. And while there are those who only can see the mistakes that were made or the negatives that were associated with some of our decisions, we of the PNM must always see the fundamental changes that were made by those far-reaching decisions. Because today, we are far better off for having made those decisions. And you have to ask yourself, had we not made those decisions, what other decisions would have taken us to where we are in 2020? Ladies and gentlemen, there was a time when a truck a loaded truck going to San Fernando would stall on the point of Pier Hill and traffic would back up all the way past Coover. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, those of us who are Tobagonians will know that to get from Scarborough to Charlottesville, cargo from Trinidad, you had to go around the island by boat called the Coastal Steamer Service because there was no road that was drivable into Charlottesville. You left Scarborough after the, you disembarked, and you went up to Mount St. George, and then you went to Bell Garden, and then you went to Roxborough, then you went to Speyside, then you went to Charlottesville, then you went to Castara, Bloody Bay, and down to Plymouth and back to Scarborough, and that was your route. That's what it was. But the PLM's vision in this 60, 64-year period, we traveled those roads with boundless faith in the destiny that we will change this and make it better. So today's generation, like my children and yours, take it for granted that it was always like this. I could tell you tonight, had it not been for the PNM, we might very well have been going around Tobago by boat still and going up Point of Pear Hill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Independence brought to us great responsibility, not for actions within our border only, but for where we should position ourselves as an independent nation in a world that could be very unkind to small nations. We are always going to be a small nation, but we're never going to be a small people. I don't know where you were, but I can take you now and show you where I was. When those beeps, those beeps shocked the world. The Americans and all of us woke up and heard those beeps and discovered that Russia had put an instrument into orbit. And then later on, the Russians had sent a dog into space. Remember those stories? But Dr. Williams and the PNM understood what that meant. It meant that the technological era was upon us. And World War II didn't end the global contention. The Cold War was as cold as ever. It was that time when you couldn't make a phone call from St. Augustine to Port of Spain without booking it days in advance. And then the operator will call you back two days later and tell you it's, your call is ready. But because we understood that communication and technology was upon us, Dr. Williams and the PNM, we built Textel to allow us to connect to the international telephone system in a way that was modern. Today, 
the world is on our cell phone and we have one of the highest saturation and usage of the internet not all for good because some people using it for absolute evil ladies and gentlemen we were here the PNM when Cuba a Caribbean country became the target of exclusion but before that we were here when the Russian Navy was on its way and World War III was close and the line was drawn in the sand in the sea and we were asking will the Russians turn around but we maintain that Cuba is a Caribbean territory and we will not be dictated to by how we relate to Cuba because the principles upon which we got our independence will determine how we relate to every country in the world. And that is why during this period, we have consistently called for the lifting of the embargo against Cuba because we believe it is not helpful to any of us and it's hurting a Caribbean nation. Only the PNM can do that and has done that. And when the rest of the world, the vast majority of the rest of the world, determined that Taiwan was China and mainland China with a billion people was not China, Dr. Williams, the PNM leader and the leader of Trinidad and Tobago, said that Trinidad and Tobago acknowledged mainland China as the Chinese people. And that is why today, the relationship between the PNM and the Communist Party of China is a bond that will not be broken. It took the rest of the world decades to come to that point. But Trinidad and Tobago and the PNM was there from day one. That is what leadership is about. That is what principle is about, and that is what confidence is about, and that is why we say we have boundless faith in our destiny, because we have the PNM. <laughs> we have maintained the United States as our major, major trading partner. We are very close to Canada. A lot of what we did in the parliament, in terms of institutional strengthening and operation of our parliament, you may not know. The Canadians are very helpful to us in assisting us in strengthening our parliament and to that we are very, for that we are very grateful. We maintain close relationship with our colonial, ex-colonial master, the United Kingdom. We are not very clear now where they are going, but we know wherever they go, if even we don't follow, they will remain a friend of Trinidad and Tobago. We in Trinidad and Tobago have so conducted ourselves in the conduct of elections that our election and boundaries commission has been seen as a resource for much larger countries who needed the skills of our staff and who wanted to experience what we have experienced. On principle, as a country where a significant proportion of our population is from the diaspora of Africa. When there were countries in Africa struggling for independence, Trinidad and Tobago provided assistance to countries a thousand times our size. And when injustice prevailed in South Africa, and there were those who turned a blind eye to it, and there were those who conveniently cooperated with it, Trinidad and Tobago would have none of it. We saw navies from the north go to the South Pole to fight a battle over a piece of rock, but refused in Africa to lift a bow and arrow when Ian Smith declared unilateral independence in Rhodesia. We saw that. 
And the PLM stood against that because it was wrong. We, ladies and gentlemen, this PNM has held standards high in this country and out of this country because we have always differentiated between right and wrong. And that is why today we want to say to our young people, in particular, because many of you are adults, you're big and you have sense, but you're just worthless. If you want to partake in a principle that says you don't mind that the government is a thief, you don't mind that they could cheat, you don't mind that they could empty the treasury as long as they give you some. I want to say to our young people, I want to say to our young people, to our young people in particular, that this PNM is your beacon of hope in Trinidad and Tobago. It is common at the beginning of the year that I would communicate with you by an address to the nation, sometimes more than once, but early in the year. This year I chose to do a little different. I chose to sit down with an experienced reporter with no condition set. Not on time limit, not on what can be asked. And I sat down with a reporter from a business house. And he asked me, we spoke question and answer for over two hours. When I did that, I had made two arrangements. One to do so in Trinidad and the other one to do so in Tobago. In Trinidad, I asked and got the agreement of someone from one station. And in Tobago, I asked to do a similar thing and got agreement from a person from another station. When it was time to broadcast that conversation with the Prime Minister, one business house decided not to carry it. Not that you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, would be deprived of what the Prime Minister had to say. Because I thought, if I talked to a reporter for two and a half hours, you would want to know what I was talking about, because I was talking about you. And of course, we couldn't tell them to carry it. We said, okay, if you're not going to carry it, no problem. But today, that same business house, that refused to carry the Prime Minister talking to you, had two pages of Jolene John. Two pages of a person who has a lot to answer about your business that they had before. But that's all right. That's all right. We in Trinidad and Tobago, we still are free people. We still are free people, and the PNM will always keep you free. And of course, what is the basis of my confidence? The basis of my confidence is that you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, you always hold the PNM to a higher standard. And that is why no party officer, no officer of the PNM, no, holding of, no holder of office who is charged for bribery could be operating public business as a PNM officer. And that is why if you come for screening, and it turns out in the screening that you are of interest to the police, you can't pass there. 
And that is why we will not, we will not give up our effort to make Trinidad and Tobago a place where the law applies equally to every person. <laughs> On that journey of 64 years, we started in a place where privilege was policy. Dr. Williams and the PNM created opportunity for all. Opportunity for all. And I tell you, there are those today who take that for granted. I warn you, cancer does come back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this party was not formed to give somebody a walk. Dr. Williams was at the Caribbean Commission and he came face to face with racism and injustice and privilege of the colonial master. And they did, they did us a favor, you know. Those who thought like that did us a favor because had they renewed his contract, and acknowledge his brilliance, he may never have left the commission and come and let his bucket down in Woodford Slayer. Thank God! Thank God that they fired him because that is when he was led to the place where he would do the most good, not just for Trinidad and Tobago, but for the people of the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, we in Trinidad and Tobago, we are fortunate people. There are some countries that had their hands on resources. Large countries are not so large countries. In many instances, they spent it on weapons, and they created wealthy royalty. In Trinidad and Tobago, our fortunes have fluctuated. Sometimes it rises, sometimes it falls. But because we are true to that North Star of the assignment of betterment for the people of Trinidad and Tobago, in fair weather or foul, the PNM has been the best leadership for Trinidad and Tobago. When we got additional resources, we spent it on the people. We created opportunities. We created jobs through service to the people. Every service that the government provides to the people of Trinidad and Tobago involves jobs for people. And as a matter of fact, those who made the highest jump in the quantum leap in our population are those persons who got jobs in the public service paid for by the Treasury of Trinidad and Tobago. And during that time, when the resources were better, we built. How many of you, younger ones, won't know when the only route to Arima was the Eastern Main Road? How many of you? And when we built the roundabout, the, the overpass in Bartaria there, we call it the flyover. It was a landmark in this country. Right then, Bartaria was the end of the highway. And then we go east, and we go east. And we get all the way to Sangre Grande. And of course, as we're building the peace for the people in Sangre Grande, there are those who are telling us, don't build it because they got it in Bataria and in Curiap and in Aruka. They tell that to the PNM, as they had told us, don't build the Clonwell Highway in Tobago. It's a good thing the PNM, through Dr. Williams, they learned to put your finger in your ears. <laughs> because had we listened to them, some of them, 
Had you listened, had we listened to them as they lie down in front of the bulldozer to block the Claude Noel Highway? If we had listened to them, there would have been no Claude Noel Highway in Tobago today. Had we listened to them, there would have been no Eric Williams Medical Complex. As far as they're concerned, what exists is what should be. Colonial masters left us at a colonial hospital in Port of Spain. What more do you want? That is not the PNM's vision. The PNM's vision is to continue to build and to provide a better quality of life for the people of Trinidad. And As I speak to you now, it happens to be one of those times when we are in the trough of opportunity. We're budgeting gas at $3.25. Gas fell to below $2 recently and is mired at $2. That should tell you we aren't going to earn as we might have done if the price was higher. And we can't influence the price in any way. But we have to keep on course. I have to keep on course. As I speak to you now, the colonial hospital, which had been expanded by what we call the, the new block, over 400 beds in that new block. The new block was deemed to be unsafe, engineering unsound. We had a 6.8 earthquake the other day. God helped us. It didn't fall but we'd be tempting fate if we had remained inactive with respect to that issue. I can tell you tonight, work has commenced on the construction of a new block of over 500 beds to replace the one that is there that could fall any time. I could tell you, we saw President's house collapsed in 2010 and we watched it till 2016 and this party and this government in this difficult period said it was unworthy of a people to watch the president's house turn a labas and collapse upon us. The PNM fixed it. I've been in cabinet in government for quite a while, up and down, and I saw, I saw the Prime Minister's office moving all around Port of Spain like Miss Howard Cat. <laughs> because Whitehall was just beyond us. We fixed that too. Some local engineers did a study, told us that mill floor could not be saved, the foundation is too bad, and the building had virtually reached the stage of demolition. We asked Cuba for help. The Cubans provided technicians and more, and said we could save it. Tonight, I want to thank the Cuban government, and I want to thank the Cubans. Because they worked round the clock with local people who didn't have the, way, the, the know how. The Cubans provided the know how, and we provided the rest. And now Milfleur is a jewel in the crown of Trinidad and Tobago. At the time when I chaired that committee to ensure that these buildings did not go into further disrepair, I did not know of the situation inside of QRC. I found out after that inside of QRC, our boys couldn't go throughout the building because there were, sec there were sections in the building that had become in such disrepair that it posed a danger to your children. Last Thursday, cabinet agreed to send Unicot into QRC and we if we have to eat green fig and suck salt, we're going to fix it. And when we repaired the red house, 
And when we give you a parliament and a companion building for $600 million less than the others were doing, and you hear voices against that, like Lloyd Best would say, them is people to watch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for standing up for Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you all for standing with the PNM. I want to give a special thank you to those members and supporters in areas where the PNM does not consistently or at all win at election time. Because it's harder to be PNM and to stand on PNM principles in those areas. I want to thank you specially because it is your principles that we hold on to. Justice, opportunity, equality, morality in public affairs. And I'm putting you on notice that the next election will be fought on the principle of morality in public affairs. There are those who believe, there are those who believe that the next election will be fought on, I will give you this, I will give you that, I will give you this, I will give you that. If that is the last time that I will campaign in this country, as it very well might be. Because had it not been for the commitment I made to the people of Diego Martin West, I could easily have walked away at this time and say, I have served my country. I've kept the faith and I kept the course. But this time, for those who believe, for those who believe, that there are people in this country who will sacrifice their children's future for our food card and our dollar bill. I want to say to them tonight from a PNM platform in this 64th year, if Dr. Williams had believed in those principles, this party would never have been formed and this culture would never have been born as a political nation. We have fought many battles, but we have never run from the fight. We have fought every election, whether it is general, local, THA, county council, by election. The PNM has fought every election in every part of this country on every occasion. And while doing so, we have vanquished them in the hills. We have vanquished them in the plains. We have vanquished them in the east. We have vanquished them in the west. We have vanquished them in Tobago. We have vanquished them in south. And in 2020, in 2020, we will vanquish them in Trinidad and Tobago. Great is the BNM. Great is the BNM. Great is the PNM and we shall prevail.